Hello guys, today I will be going over dictionaries in Python. Dictionaries are the last type of data collection that I want to cover. They are unordered, but changeable, and they have index values. Dictionaries are unique because they're written with curly braces, brackets, but they also have keys and values stored within them. Keys will be on the left side of the colon, and values will be on the right side of the colon. Let me show you an example. <coughs> So here I've created a dictionary called sample dictionary and in it I have my curly brackets however you should notice that the format of how a dictionary is made is very different from the other data collection types. So on the left of the colon I have a key called brand and inside this key I have a value for then I have another key for model which is a different type of key and then in here I have the value mustang assigned to this key and then lastly I have the key year value 1964 Dictionaries are a good way to store and categorize separate different types of information in a single data collection type. So when I print this out, it prints this out, it prints out our dictionary with both keys and values separated by commas for each different category and type. And if you just if you, just in case you're curious, you can use lists, entire lists or arrays as values for these keys. So if you want more than just Ford assigned to the category brand, which is your key, you can have Ford, um, you can have an entire list in here. So, oh, hang on, let me undo that. Um, what's another car brand? Toyota. Uh, Mazda. And if I print that, there we have a list stored to the key brand. Now let's go over some more complex examples. Alright, accessing items. We can access items inside dictionaries by referring to the name of its key by using square, inside the square brackets. So to get the value of the model key by example, we will do the following. So I have assigned x as a variable, as a variable that will take the model key from our dictionary. So let's print x. And we get Mustang, which is the value of our model. And we can do the same with lists. So Mustang, Corolla, and I don't really remember models of Mazda, but um, I'll just put in whatever. And yes, we can get the entire list, our entire list value, just by accessing the key. So again, dictionaries are a very good way of storing categorized items in, in a single data collection type. We can also use the get function to get a value. So yeah, a built-in function dot get. Same with other data collection types. It returns the same value. I mean, yeah, the same output. You can also change values by using a specific item referring to its key name. So in this case, let's change year to 2020. So we can do that by accessing the key and assigning a new value. And now the year is 2020. Also I'm going to get rid of these lists just to make it neater to look at. And we can also use the for loop to loop through a dictionary. So if we want to print all the examples in our dictionary, we'll just use the same very basic construct that we've used for all our data collection types. It's simple, it's basic, but it works. However, it is important to know that this only returns the keys, not the values. If we want to print all the values, we have to change it. So instead of just x, we need to call our sample dictionary. And now we have just the values printed from a for loop. And we can also use the values function to return values instead of having to call for the values directly. So instead of putting the name of the dictionary with a square bracket for the x parameter, we can just say simple dic 
dictionary.values and it should output the same thing. Actually, while I'm on values, let me just go down. I have something else I want to cover with values. And that is when a value is changed in the dictionary, our output also gets updated. So here's a quick example. Let me just uh, copy and paste this that I found online. So here's our dictionary. We call the values function, but before printing it, we do change the year, one of the values, and it still outputs the most up-to-date information. So that's just something to remember for the values function. Anyway, where was I? Values, values again. Okay, so if we want to print both keys and values, it's uh, pretty simple. So instead of using just an x and y, we use 4x, comma y in our dictionary. Let me just uh, change the name. And we use the items function that will get everything. Basically, the items function is used to grab both keys and values. So there we go. It will print out the category and then the value. And again, while I'm in the items category, I think I have a second example, which is just before the values example. Date values set default pop pop item. That's the keys function. Okay, items. I think it's the same thing I went over with values. It will always output the most up-to-date. So yeah, just the same, just doing the same thing over again. It will always update, update the most, sorry, it will always output the most recent update on the dictionary. So even if you store your, use the items function to store your dictionary in the variable before making any changes, it'll still print out the most up-to-date. And yeah, the items function also creates the output in a very organized manner. You are literally getting everything. You're literally getting the dictionary word for word as it is in the code printed out. And what else? Values, items, okay, the key function. So if you want to determine a key is present, we use the in keyword. Okay, so I'm not in the key function yet. Well, let's just uh, go through an example of that. Sorry if I'm being pretty quiet right now. I just I'm recording this late at night, so I can't really talk too loud. I really need to change my sleeping schedule to uh, record in the day. But anyways, if a certain key is available in our dictionary, I should print out yes, the model is available, and it is. But if I were to uh, comment this out, it prints nothing because it doesn't detect it. I've gone over this in other data collection example, data storage examples, such as list and arrays, so I'm not going to go over this too much here. I just want to get to the unique functions as soon as possible. And yes, we can use the len function to determine the length of the dictionary. Pretty simple. Three items, and by items it, it means both the keys and the values. The keys and the values are stored as a single item, so it, this dictionary is three items long. You can make it longer, I'm pretty sure by this point you guys know what I'm talking about and how it is. You can also add items to the dictionary. So here's the method we use without using any functions to add items. We simply use the square brackets, add a key, and then assign that key a value. So when we print it, it has our brand, our model, our year, and now a new key, which is color. And for that, we've selected red. And the values can be lists here as well, so. And we have the pop function, if you want to remove an item. In this case, we can use it to delete a specific item, such as model. And that includes its key and value. So now there's no model and Mustang in the dictionary. And if I remove the parameters, it gives us an error. So it does not remove the last item like other data collection types do. And if we want to delete an item, we can use the delete keyword. It does the same thing, but 
You can also delete the dictionary itself, which gives us an error because the dictionary has been deleted. And we have the clear function. So if you want to clear the dictionary but not delete the dictionary data type itself, and by that I mean the name of the dictionary, if you want this name stored in memory, that is a type of dictionary, but it's empty, and you don't want anything inside of it, just use the clear function. And we get an empty dictionary. Actually, while I'm at this, I'm curious. Let's look over the type. So let's look over the type without using clear. So Python recognized this as a dictionary. I'm just curious whether the type changes, because I know one of the other data collections was also curly brackets, so let's see. Nope, still a dictionary. I was just curious, sorry about this, guys. Anyway, we can copy a dictionary. So just like with the other data types. I've created a new dictionary called my dictionary. Well, it's a variable, but it's a dictionary because it copies the first one. So let's print the new one and the old one. And yep, it prints both of them. They're identical because they're clones, they're using the copy method. But we know it works because we're calling them by the different names. And instead of using the copy method, we can also use the constructor. By using the dict keyword, which will be our constructor and it gives us the same output. And we can also have nested dictionaries. So here's a quick example. So I have, an, I have a super dictionary called my group, and inside it I have a sub dictionary, member one, which contains the item name with Winston, year over 2004. And I have another sub dictionary with the name Charles, year 20, 2007, and then I have a third sub-dictionary with the name Linus in the year 2001. And let's just print my group. Actually, I don't know why I'm doing that. And it prints out all three dictionaries inside a larger dictionary. And we can call a specific dictionary by its name. Member one, for instance. And I'll print out just the first sub dictionary. I can also go through a for loop to print them individually. And if you want to group together, if you want to use the nesting, if you want to nest three pre existing dictionaries rather than creating them on the spot, can do that using this method. So over here, member one, two, and three are dictionaries that are predefined. It's not created in the super dictionary, but we can't. What we can do is we can create a super dictionary. We can give it a key, and then for the value, we can put in our dictionary, which turns into a sub dictionary of my group. And then we can create a second key, which has the second dictionary as a value. Basically what I'm saying is you can use dictionaries themselves as values for keys in another dictionary. Just like you can do it with lists or arrays or any other data collection type. And if I print it... Sorry, in this case instead of member 1 it's going to be first. Because when you're using the square brackets to call an item, you have to call it by its key. So yeah, I'm doing this will print out the first sub-dictionary. But, if I want to print all three dictionaries, I will call the super dictionary, where they're all contained within, and we get all of them. And I think I went over the dictionary constructor. But uh, let me go over it again, just because it's in my lists. So this dictionary is the dict keyword, and then it has so it has keywords, or it has keys, except this time it's not using a colon. Instead it's using equal sign. The equal sign can be seen as a colon. The strings to the right of them are values, 
And the keywords are not strings, they are blue, they're colored blue because the dictionary constructor recognizes them as keys. But when we print it, it shows them as they would. It basically shows it as if it would be if we used them, if we created the dictionary using any normal method. If that makes sense. Anyway, that's all the old stuff that the dictionary shares with other data collection types. I, I will now go over some of the functions that are unique to the dictionary type that are not found in the other data collection types. Alright, so one of the new functions that are unique to the dictionary type, I've already gone over a couple of them, such as the values function, the items function, and the keys function. Let me go over the rest. So we have the from keys function. The from keys function returns a dictionary with the specific keys and the specified values. Or sorry, the specified keys and the specified value. Its syntax is the name of our dictionary dot from keys with the key that we want to specify and or a value that we want to specify. So here's a quick example. And the source that I use to get these examples from is listed in the dictionary in the description box below, so you guys can check that out. Anyway, um, okay, so we have a tuple that has three keys. And then we have a integer that's zero. This will be our value. So I'm using the dictionary constructor to use the from keys function to return a dictionary that contains the keys from our tuple, which is X, which can be any data collection type, but it has to be keys, so it can be dictionary, so any single data collection type. And then our values, which in this case is Y. So when we print this, it basically creates a dictionary using the from keys function. So we have our three keys and they all have the value zero. And if I were to use a tuple in the Y to assign values, then the output of this is all the same. Basically it's mapping the same Y, the same Y value to each of the keys. Basically, it's copying it three times. So we can't just put in separate values and expect one to map to key one, or two to map to key two. The from keys function just does it this way. And we can also use it to create an empty dictionary, well, empty in the sense of values, by not specifying a Y value. So this time we just have keys. And we get dictionary with three keys but no values, which can be used in any function later on. I will go over some of these dictionary functions a lot more in the future. Right now, I just want to, right now, I just want to cover the basics. So, if there is a way to map the Y values one by one to each of the keys, then I will cover that in a different video. But right now, I just want to get the dictionary introduction done. So, we used the get function already. Um, pretty sure we did. Let me just double check. Yeah, we did. But let me go over an example of what you what happens when you use the get function to return a value that does not exist in the dictionary. So again, we have our dictionary, but there's no value called price, but we're using the get function to get a price with a value. When we do this, oh yeah, it needs to print it out. Let's print out both car and x. So it, when we do this, we can still print out our dictionary, and we can note we notice that even though we called x, we called the get function before printing out the dictionary, the dictionary has not been updated. But when we use the get function for an item that is not in the dictionary, it still returns the value. This can lead to some errors when you're using this in a real-world coding example. So just be wary of this. I just wanted to go over this just to show you guys like what could happen in this case. Okay, I went over the items function. Uh, and yeah, I also went over the updated items function. I went over the keys function. Not sure if I went over the updated keys function, so let me just go over this again. If I did, I'm sorry guys. You guys can just uh, skip this part if I already did. I tend to get short term, short term memory sometimes. But yeah. We call the keys function. And then we assign it a color. And then we print it and it gets updated anyways. Basically we're calling the keys function before updating the dictionary and then when we print it after the fact it still shows the most up-to-date value. That's where I'm being. 
and I don't think I've even over pop item, so let's go over this. The pop item function removes the item that was last inserted into the dictionary. So basically what pop used to do, or pop does for other data collection types. In the versions before 3.7, so if you're using 2.7, this method will remove a random item, so just be wary of that. And the item we remove can be returned as a value from the function. The syntax is the name of our dictionary, dot pop item, with no input as the parameter. So let's go over this. Right now I'm using the uh, keyboard and mouse with one hand, which is why I'm not using keyboard shortcuts. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so we're calling the pop item function, and it removes the year item from our dictionary. But if we have it print x and assign our pop item to x, it will only show the item we removed. And if we print the dictionary anyways, then we have x printed out as the item removed, and then the dictionary with the item now removed from it. And we have the set default function, which returns the value of the item with the specified key. If the key we specify does not exist, insert the key with the specified value. So basically like the get function. How there was like no predetermined key, it will just return a value that we put in. Which is a way we can use to avoid uh, errors in case we're using this in a large real world coding example. To call this, we, we name our dictionary dot set default. Then we look for a key in the parameters and or value. So let me just show you guys this. Okay, so I assigned, cast it to our x variable, the dictionary dot set default, this time model bronco. So model already exists, but we added a new value to the key model. And when we do this, the original item is returned. So let's see what happens when we print the dictionary now. I want to see what updates have been occurred. So Mustang, Mustang. Weird. The dictionary is unchanged. Hmm. Let me call model. So let's see what happens when we don't put a value. Same thing. Yeah, same thing. So I guess the value really doesn't matter. Get the value of the color item if the color does not exist, insert the color white. Alright, let's try this example. It's basically the same thing. So this time it does add the Oh, I see. So if the key already exists, it will simply return what's removed, so the value doesn't matter if the key already exists. But if the key doesn't exist, like color, it will add it in, and then return the value of the added in key that of the key that we set in. So that's how the set default function works. And lastly, we have the update function. The update function inserts the specified item to the dictionary. So kind of like what we just did right now. The specified item can be a dictionary or an iterable object. To call this, we use the name of our dictionary dot update with whatever we want update inside. So, actually, let me just copy just this one line. Actually, we don't need the x equals to. So the main difference here would be that we don't have to, unlike the set default, we don't have to store the set default into a variable. The update will simply update the dictionary without having to store anything. So yeah, it just adds the color white to it. 
and then we have values which I went over and yeah I think that's it that's that's all I want to cover for dictionaries for now um, there's some stuff that I don't fully understand myself such as the difference between set default and update in a larger example I mean I, I do understand the difference it's just like one, one of the other functions we went over before with lists where some of them you have to assign the output to a variable whereas others can just be called as an update of the function to the data collection type itself but I'll go over more examples on these in a later video or maybe in a little in, in a later project that I end up doing anyways hope you guys learned something from this and I will see you in the next one bye bye